Welcome back to the Red Dirt Road Podcast. I'm your host, Marshall Farnsworth, here with Alex Breitenbach and Canadian country artist, Corey Gallant. How's it going? Good, boys. How you doing? Good. Doing all right. Doing all right. So, another day, another dollar. So, <laughs> hanging in there, I guess. So that's how's, a great one. how's the uh, situation up in Canada as far as restaurants and whatnot with the COVID-19? Well, things are starting to, to open up, you know, a little bit more than what they were. Um, where I'm from is uh, I'm from an island of 155,000 people. And our main way off the island is a bridge. So uh, there was heavy precautions and, and rules put on the bridge for people coming in. So we really flattened the curve pretty quick. Uh, not allowing anyone but essential people to the island. So we've been okay that way. You know, we're still very, um, very cautious about it because, you know, it's, it's not gone by any means. But just trying to uh, have some kind of normality, you know, between family life and, and the music life because things really are upside down that way as well. So trying to make the best of it. Yeah. Where, where exactly in Canada are you? You said, well, I think you said it, or? Yeah, I'm from the East Coast, so uh, as far east as you can go, so part of the Maritimes, which is uh, Newfoundland, Brunswick, and Nova Scotia, and Prince of Rhode Island. So, um, yeah, we're just a little island on the east, and I'm from the, the western tip, so uh, right, right on the very tip of one end of the islands where I'm from. So, um, yeah, so we're, I mean, the other end of the country is, you know, Vancouver, British Columbia, so we're at the opposite. All right. Yeah, so we're yeah, we're on the east side of the United States. I'm in Ohio. Alex, right. Connecticut. Yeah, I'm I'm on the I'm on the East Coast. Uh but Marshall here is kind of Midwestern. Like, Midwest, yeah. Like Still, Great Lakes region. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've I haven't I mean I've been through Ohio years ago playing and stuff, um, but never really uh, visited either either state so uh you know just get back there you know we've been doing some stuff in in um oregon and uh stanwood washington we did some shows mm-hmm. as well not quite your area yet but you know we'll see someday oh, yeah we are talking about the river kicked by uh kicks brooks going through his self-titled album this is the fifth song off of his album it was written by Kix Brooks and Russell Smith. Uh, I, I looked a little bit into Russell Smith, who this guy was. He had some number one hits with write, writing number one hits with Randy Travis, uh, a few other guys. I think he had four number one hits. He was the former lead singer of a band called The Amazing Rhythm Aces. And the song, you know, I, I personally like this song. I'll, I'll give my opinion a little bit more of it later. But it starts off with, acoustic guitar kind of a slow tempo and he's basically comparing an old or some sort of a body of water to getting older and falling in love and stuff and he first mentions at the age of 17 a tiny mountain stream i kind of look at that like he's young dealing with uh crushes and whatnot kind of a smaller stream and then it gets up to the river says he still hasn't seen the river and he continues making references, comparing the river to love, falling in love. Says that the river carries them on the journey to the sea. Which I think maybe is, uh, you know, that's like he's saying that's his life is the river. And then maybe the sea is means the end of his life or I'm not sure what it, maybe that's what it means. And then the second verse, he kind of continues describing the river saying, you know, the moons and things like that, kind of saying what, what he's seeing. And it ends by saying this quote, it's always you and me on the journey to the sea, the river. So what, uh, Alex, what do you, what were your opinions of this song? What do you think about it? I personally think right off the bat, I mean, it's definitely down tempo. It's heartfelt. Like I, I get it. It's acoustic, you know, it's toned down. I, I liked that part of it. I guess when it comes to the lyrics, I guess I just didn't relate to it that much. It didn't call to me 
as much as, you know, his other songs, like there's a telephone ringing or she does the walk on by or other stuff that we've done in, uh, in this album so far. I mean, honestly, like I, I really get where it's coming from. And I think that um, how Howard Russell Smith, I think that's his full name uh, and Kix Brooks did a good job writing this. I, I just think that it wasn't, I just think that it wasn't the best work in, in my opinion. I think that um, it, it's a nice song, but I don't think it, it it's a smash hit and I don't think it was designed to be one, but it, like in that regard, I think you got to You do got to give it its props that it's a good song to listen to, but it, it comparative to the other songs in the album. I don't know if I like this one that much. And other than that though, it's a, it's a pretty, it's a pretty good tune. It's catchy. Like, and it definitely, it tells a story, which I like that about it. I like country songs that tell stories and, you know, get the, uh, get the listener involved and that sort of thing. Like telling, comparing the story of life and how you grow to a river as it flows. That's pretty cool. But I, I just, I didn't really like this song that much. No. Corey, what, uh, you know, you might, you might, you probably haven't heard this song before. Uh, I would, I would guess, but maybe you have uh what what do you what do you think about it well i, I hadn't uh, i'll be honest i hadn't heard it until you would uh, send it over and, and give me a little bit of info on it and i agree with alex i mean um you know i cut my teeth playing brooks and dunn music uh growing up into the 90s and you know he said so many uh so many hits from their earlier days and like Lost and Found, Brand New Man, and, and all the older stuff. And even, uh, I didn't know this, but when, when I searched it up, he had also written Sacred Ground, the McBride and Ride song. But when I listened to this one, I have to agree with Alex that it wasn't, it, it wasn't one of my favorites of his, but he is so, such a genius when it comes to metaphors and being a lyricist and being able to tell a story um, and, and that's what this whole song was to me was a, just metaphor after metaphor, you know, and it really takes you on a bit of a journey that, you know, I might interpret this song one way and Alex another way and Marshall another way and, and someone else another way. And I think it, it could relate to a lot of people in life experiences for them, you know, they might relate, relate to that. And which is a, the premise of a great country song. I mean, it does tell a story. Um, but it's very deep and, and, you know, um, it wasn't one of my favorites either, but like I said, you have to appreciate, uh, how much of a genius you get them from a great writing song as an aspiring songwriter myself, you know, it's, I can't say it's a bad song because it's, it's not, but it just, again, wasn't one of my, my favorites. Oh yeah. No, I, I totally get that. I think you really got to give, you, you, you do got to give kicks Brooks and, and, Russell Smith, the, um, the props, you know, the, for the lyrics and stuff, you know, the writing that goes into it. Um, I, I do think though, that this was, it, it's kind of hit or miss sometimes. And like th this one was a miss for me, like, although his, his others, he has some other unbelievable songs, like even on this album in, in general, that's like, there's no doubt about that. This one just wasn't, wasn't there for me this time. I think I, yeah, this, this is not my favorite one. I still like, there's a telephone ringing, my favorite one. This one, I, I still do. I like it more than some of the other ones we've covered, though. I don't, you know, I kind of agree with you, you know, lyrically. I thought some of it was a little bit weird. You know, I was like, you know, he's talking about this river and stuff. And, and the second verse, he's just kind of like describing, he's talking about like the moon and stuff. I don't really know what that has to do with anything. Um, you know, it's, I don't know, not my favorite one. But as far as just listening to it, I probably enjoy just listening to it more than some of the other ones on here not my favorite one but yeah the lyrics not my favorite i did think it was interesting though that the guy russell smith had the number one hit with uh randy travis who i kind of you know his his one song uh what's it called with the whippoorwill deeper than a holler you know that's kind of combines like nature and stuff like that and I kind of thought about this song when I was thinking about it, you know, down to Whippoorwill, something like that. So I thought maybe he that he brought his kind of influence from that or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I had in fact, but the other writer is Michael Smith. You said 
It's a uh, a guy named Russell Smith. Yeah, yeah, Russell, Russell Smith. He was in the hall, or did he? Will Brandy? Uh, I don't know if he if he helped write that song or not. I don't think he did. He um, there was a there was some kind of different song. Um, let me look that up real quick. Yeah, he had uh, he had hits with Randy look Travis. Heart, no look heart no hands was yeah yeah his number one you know, song with Randy Travis. Say that it's funny you say that because uh, I, I believe another writer uh, Trey Bruce wrote that song as well with them. I don't know if you see Trey's name on there. I don't think Trey was on. He he wasn't on the this album with Kick Brooks, but I'll probably I'll probably. Well, I was saying, he wrote the, the Randy Travis song with with Russell. Uh, oh, all right. So it's 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 it's, uh, it's funny because uh, Trey also wrote two songs on my record, on my record. So kind of full circle there, but pretty cool. Oh yeah, Trey Bruce did uh, did write uh, "Look Heart No Hands" with. Uh, with, uh, yeah, 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 and I found this this song almost a, a folky vibe to it. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that was just you know, uh, we have a lot of uh, singer songwriter real cowboys here in Canada in the West. Ian Tyson, if it would be a good example of of what this song reminded me of, if you if you looked up Ian Tyson at the time and listened to his story songs, um, it, it kind of reminded me of of that style because Ian writes a lot of uh, metal forward into his songs as well. So um, it, it reminded me of a long, a long time. So that is The River by Kitch Brooks. Mm-hmm.